It's Boy Morse's Time with Daryl the Doge, episode 29. Welcome back to Fallen Morsels. I'm Papa, and that's Daryl. Well, Valentine's Day is long behind us now, but that doesn't mean you've had to give up on finding love. Well, we are in the midst of a pandemic still, so our options are limited, but you tried your paw at online dating. Well, luckily for you, there was no one on the other line. We're just getting you ready, since first impressions are everything. Ah, because who needs a car when you can skate to your date? It looks like you're working on your mannerisms and maybe learning how to type. But at least you're ready for your online date. How exciting! Well, that sure was silly, bud. But as an emotional support animal, I hope you know when it's okay to be silly and when it's time for work. With a few more classes under your belt, we think that one day you could be a licensed therapy dog. And speaking of therapy dogs, Mama sat down with our special guest today, Barbara, and her dog Carmel to hear about the amazing life of a therapy dog. Take it away, Mama. So my name is Barbara Bocatus, and professionally I'm actually a college professor. And um, we got Carmel um, five years ago. We just loved the dog right from the beginning. So tell me a little bit more about how you got into therapy training. Was this your yeah. first dog that you trained to be a therapy dog? So for our family, this was this is a, this is first dog to begin with of oh, any wow. kind. She's a standard doodle. Mm -hmm. She's 65 pounds now. She became extremely strong, became so strong that I couldn't take her for a walk. And therefore we started thinking what to do and we found a trainer who was willing to come to our house and start us on Gentle Leader. The trainer saw incredible potential. If you even add a little bit more training to her, she can even become a therapy dog in the future because she's got incredible personality. So that is that is really how it started. And then just one thing led to another. So obedience training, then canine with citizen, and then eventually therapy dog training. You can just tell by the videos that I watch how amazingly obedient she is and how much she listens and tunes into you. What does a typical therapy session look like virtually um, compared to yeah. what you would typically do in person? And that's a great question. So in person, what we did, mostly we went to school and mostly to elementary classroom. And I would just walk around with Carmel. She would, kids would be essentially learning something, whatever they're doing, whatever right. subject, math, whatever. Within that half an hour, she would get to every child and then to teach her. Everybody interacted with her mm -hmm. in the classroom of 20 or 20 plus kids. And then we would go to another class. So we would do two sessions like this. Mm -hmm. So that would be an hour together in two classrooms. And that's it, that's enough. Maybe many people have an idea that dog therapy is just a like dog sitting and the child reading to the dog, right? And a lot of images are about that. We were doing something different based on what worked for kids, what mm -hmm. worked for teacher. We just worked things out. And we wanted to make sure that many children would get, um, uh, would, would be able to interact with Carmel. And uh, well, when the situation happened with COVID, first there was really no any kind of therapy. Nobody really even knew what to do. Uh, for the dog, it's really hard to concentrate on the screen. Yeah. This is not easy. I have to use treats. If I use good treats that are healthy and work well, she gets um, very focused actually. Mm -hmm. So special treats work a lot. And also what we do is showing the videos like Carmel doing agility on the yeah. screen. And we have conversations with children about it. Kids are asking questions. They love to see Carmel like sitting with her um, therapy bandana mm -hmm. and like making mouth noises, munching on the treats. They just loving it. 
So it works. It works more for for the other side, for children, mm -hmm. than the dog because she she's not getting the petting, yeah. the touching. But it works uh, at least for for children. Do you have any any tips or anything um, that you want to offer to anybody that is interested in looking into that as? A journey for Definitely. their dog. The, the best idea is always to start any kind of training with mm -hmm. with with your puppy. Uh, we started the training with her when she was uh, half a year. Making sure that the, the training, the trainer, is reputable, has a certain philosophy of training. Looking for some kind of obedience school that offers uh, this kind of training. But another piece of advice too, except for training, is, is socializing your dog as soon as possible. Take into Lowe's is awesome because uh, Lowe's or Home Depot, whatever people have available, uh, most of those stores are okay with, with the dogs. They even welcome dogs. There are noises there, people. So you kind of have to do it as early as possible. I think these are kind of two pieces of the device. Yeah, there she is. Oh, oh. you shared so much information. I know. <laughs> She's just an amazing dog. Yep. Well, thank you so much again, Barbara. You're very welcome. It was nice to meet you, you I guess, too. virtually. And yeah. I am so excited to see, continue watching and following your journey on Instagram. It's been so fun. Well, that sure was great. Thank you again to Barbara for taking the time to speak with us. And be sure to check out the full interview on our YouTube and Instagram pages. All right, a quick reminder that tonight's episode is sponsored by Passerby. Passerby, you don't know them, but now you need to. Better than mine? Wow, I've never felt so unvalued before. Huh. Well, it's time for Caption This. Last week, friend of the show, Ollie, said, ah, for the camera and got a free bath in the process. Technically, he said, ma, the meatloaf! Last week's winning caption comes to us from, of course, Moe's the Mighty, who said, when it's last orders at the bar. Well, good thing this is about Ollie and not about Daryl. Let's see what you can do with this week's photo. Oh my goodness, Daryl. This is your friend, Sonny, the Californian Chihuahua Pekingese super mutt with a sharp wit. She sure has had some quality comments for our show. Let's see how she does with the tables turned, and apparently some meaty morsels in her mouth. Not everyone can be photogenic all the time. Well, comment on our YouTube or Instagram pages for your chance to be next week's featured comment. Okay, mister, it's about time we wrap things up. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we call it a day? Oh my goodness. I almost forgot. Daryl, I can't believe it. You were featured in a magazine this week. Let's see it. Bud, you were featured in Dogster Magazine. How cool is that? I agree. Always so nice to see a smile when you're skateboarding. I'm going to pretend like I'm not completely blown away by your ability to suddenly read and just say that she sung the Skater Boy song that ended up being your skating anthem. It sure is. Well, thanks, Dogster, for letting our boy grace your pages. Okay, that's all the time we have. Thanks for tuning in to Fallen Morsels. And I'm Papa. Not a star. We'll see you next time. Hey bud, you ready to read Dogster? We're gonna read some Dogster magazine. Oh my goodness, I can't read this without my glasses. Obviously these are prescription. Okay. There you are, bud. If you would like your pet or perhaps your non-profit organization to be featured in Fallen Morsels, just send us over a little tippy tap on the old keyboard, just like so, and we'd be happy to speak with you about further incorporation into our humble program. All right, thanks for watching. 
you know, one of these days we should really talk about how you learned to read. I'm still kind of surprised that you just magically knew what was written in this magazine. Because I don't think dogs are supposed to be able to read. Not that they're not supposed to, just that they can't. We want you to read. At least someone in this house would read. Because I am illiterate. Okay, fine. We'll read Where's Daryl. Yeah, this is better. It's just pictures. Okay, we'll see you next time.